Welcome to Movie Math, where we task our crack team of PhD holding internet scientists to exhaustively research the questions that really matter. Like how much cake they eat in Marie Antoinette, the Sofia Coppola version. Today, We'll be looking at a time when dinosaurs ruled the box office in Jurassic Park. This film presented an incredible vision of humans interacting with these wondrous creatures in peace and harmony. And <laughs> I'm just kidding, a lot of people get eaten. Like, a lot of people. <laughs> it's a bloodbath. In the original film, the park never actually opens due to, you know, all the death and hubris. But we here at Cracked asked ourselves, if the park did open, how much would it actually cost to feed all these dinosaurs? And before we get started, I just wanna say, even though most real scientists don't know exactly how much a dinosaur would eat in a given day, all of the information I'll be presenting is 100% factually accurate. I'm talking scientific, peer-reviewed shit, all right? Who are the peers that reviewed this? The other people who work at Cracked, this beloved comedy channel that refuses to die. And yes, we are all paid in Slim Jims. Let's do this. Hold on to your butts. To begin, there are many different versions of the Dino Park to discuss. We got two film trilogies, an animated show on Netflix that no one asked for, numerous video games, and multiple books that I have not read because they have no pictures. And mama likes colors and shapes. The first film in the series was famously based on Michael Crichton's 1990 novel. That book and its film adaptation were grounded in a semi-plausible set of scientific ideas. But that changes pretty quickly. And by the time we get to the Jurassic World movies, they're just making up crazy new dino boys that have literal superpowers. That's not even mentioning the third movie where a raptor talks. Alan. Fun fact, the guy who wrote JP3, Alexander Payne, that man has several Oscars for screenwriting films. Jurassic Park 3 is not one of them. Today, we'll be focusing on the first movie in the series, Jurassic Park. Just the first movie. Can you guys actually listen to me before going off in the comments? I don't want to hear, oh, blah, 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 you forgot about the ketoacidosis of primordial Jurassic proto-reptiles. Shut up, nerds! It is never explicitly stated exactly how many dinosaurs are on the fictional island of Isla Nublar. However, through some forensic accounting of the film and a hefty scouring of the internet, we here at Cracked have determined the following as the unofficial dino head count for the first movie. Three Brachiosaurus, one Dilophosaurus, 24 Galimimus, 10 Parasaurolophus, one Triceratops, one Tyrannosaurus Rex, and three Velociraptors. Of course, not all of these dinos require a steady diet of sexy chaos theory mathematicians. So let's separate the carnivores from the herbivores, focusing first on our meat lovers. We'll use Kleber's law. Kleber's, Sounds like Bieber's, but it's not, has nothing to do with him. Kleber's Law, named after Max Kleber for his biology work in the early 1930s, is the observation that for the vast majority of animals, an animal's metabolic rate scales to the three-fourths power of the animal's mass to determine the daily caloric needs of each species. Then multiply that result by the number of each animal type on the island. Last, we'll add them all together. First, we got Galimimus. Scientists believe a Galimimus could weigh up to 490 kgs. Using our formula, that means that one big G would take down over 16,000 calories a day. In the movie, we spotted about 24 of these, meaning that this group alone would require over 384,000 calories of food a day. Next up, we have the Dilophosaurus. She's the little cutie that spat in the face of the bad man from Seinfeld. Fossils found of this breed of dinosaur went all the way up to 400 kgs, meaning that if this dino gets her steps in, she needs to consume about 9,000 calories a day. 400 kilograms, that's like 800 pounds. And it was 20 feet long? In the movie, she fits in the front seat of a Jeep. I'm beginning to wonder if this movie is scientifically accurate. Alan. Then we have the dinosaurs that certainly gave me the most nightmares as a child, the Velociraptors. These highly intelligent animals could hunt in packs, open door handles, and yep, they had feathers. Yeah, okay, sweet Jesus. Yeah, I see why they lost the feathers in the movie. Beyond the feathers, the average raptor was actually much smaller than what was portrayed in the film, only about 43 pounds. So they'd only need 280 calories a day, skinny little bitches. That cow that gets fed to the raptors in the movie, it had decomposed long before these guys would ever finish the leftovers. You know what never goes bad? A Slim Jim. Apparently, the animal protein in Slim Jims comes from feathers. I read that on a comment from our last movie math video, so probably true. 
Last, but certainly not least, we have the big boy himself, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The average T-Rex could be up to 40 feet long and weigh over 15,000 pounds. With our calculations, that means that this dino would be looking to snack on around 45,000 calories a day. Which, when you consider Jurassic Park takes place over the course of like, a long weekend, our T-Rex eats a goat, a lawyer, a glimimus, just way more than she needs. Why is she eating like that? What's going on, girl? Come on, tell me something. To be fair, I ate like that after my divorce, so. I think it's the captivity, like show whales rebelling against the trainers. Just goes to show you, all zoos are evil. Name me one zoo that isn't evil in the comments, I dare you. Take down Big Zoo. Rest in power, Flacco. All told, our carnivores require a combined daily caloric intake of about 438,204.25 calories, or about 5,500 Slim Jims. God, can you imagine getting over 5,500 Jimmy Boys a day? I'd be rich. Step into a Slim Jim, oh yeah! If we assume the average cost of a Slimmy in the US is a dollar, that means it would cost about $5,500 a day, or $2,007,500 a year to keep those lizards fed. And to those out there saying you shouldn't feed animals in captivity, processed food every day, all day, it's inhumane, blah, 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 blah. To that, I ask, have you seen Tiger King? Those guys fed their tigers old hot dogs and dumpster beef all the time, and it worked out fine. Mostly. I've been doing this 20 years, never even been bit. Now that we've gone over our carnivores, let's talk about our salad crunching queens, the herbivores. The very first dinosaur we see in the film is the Brachiosaurus. Our calculations come out to this Brock baby needing around 60,000 calories a day to survive, which makes sense. The Brachiosaurus was one of the largest animals in the history of our planet, weighing as much as 28 tons. There are three seen in the park, meaning that they'd require about 180,000 calories a day to feed all of them. Then you have the Triceratops, which needed even more calories because just one of them needs 70,000 calories a day. There's a reason those piles of dino crap in the movie were so big. Lastly, we have the Parasaurolophus. I hate saying that. With about 10 of these in the first film, this group would have a daily caloric intake of 400,000 to 600,000, which means that our herbivores have a combined caloric requirement of around 650,000 calories a day. You may be thinking to yourself, okay, but they just eat grass and bushes. How hard is it to feed them? First of all, hey, shut up. This is my show, okay? What do you know about grass and bushes? Nothing, right? So sit down and let me speak. Secondly, these animals were alive some 153 million years ago. Prehistoric foliage was a little different than a pathetic little bitch baby plant you have sitting in your apartment window. Want to know why her leaves are wilting so badly? You're overwatering her. Touch the soil, is it sopping wet? You're literally drowning your plant, okay? In order to feed these animals a vegetable diet that would be compatible with their digestive tracts, you would have to reverse engineer foliage from that time period. Let me put this in context. A small hydroponic farm can yield about 40 heads of lettuce per foot per year. At Jurassic Park, you'd need nearly 1.4 acres of hydroponic farms growing this stuff nonstop year round. If the average cost of one foot of hydroponic farm equipment costs $1,000, you're spending $59,312,500 a year on gear alone. Also, if you're wondering why I'm using heads of lettuce in this example and not a veggie slim, it's because you can't grow a Slim Jim, you idiot. Also, a hydroponic farm doesn't run itself. Let's assume you pay an agronomist $80,000 a year and you need one for every 1,000 feet of your farm. That's another $4.8 million on labor. That's on top of all the R&D you'd need to do to even figure out how to grow a prehistoric bush or whatever. Let's assume that costs, I don't know, $15 million based on the principle of shut up, none of this exists anyway, you nerds. Which means all said and done, you're looking at paying a little less than $80 million to feed the vegetarians. Yeah. You thought the meat eaters were gonna be the problem. Guess again. Of course, a dinosaur may also be perfectly fine eating modern bushes. How would I know? I make jokes on the internet for you to watch on your lunch break. Based on these heavily scientific calculations that are completely unimpeachable, mathematically sound, and in no way fudge smudged or nudged, the total price of feeding all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park is $81,120,000 a year. 
Of course, this all comes before the rest of the operational costs and expenses needed to run a dinosaur theme park. Which begs the question, if this is how much it costs just to feed the animals, how do places like Animal Kingdom and Disney actually generate revenue? Oh yeah, they pay ride operators around $60 an hour, and they make around 250 mil just from parking. So I guess the answer is parking. Alan. I'm Britt Miggs, this was Movie Math, this is Sparky. If you like this video, you might like more of our other videos. We're doing more of these video essays. If you want us to cover a topic, let us know. If you have a comment commenting on my uh, looks or how I do things, go fuck yourself. <laughs> 24 Galimimus, 10 Parasaurolophus. I cannot say that one. 24 Galimimus, 10 Parasaurolophus. Fuck. Parasaurolophus. Huffleupagus. <laughs>